Hello students, welcome to Mr. Study and welcome to my class. Today, we are going to discuss few questions from for upcoming NEET exam preparations. Clear to you? Yes, I have taken few questions from the chapter Mole Cousin Stoichiometry, Atomic Structure, Periodic Table and Chemical Bonding. I hope it will help you a lot. Actually, we people know competitive examination is not so much tough. If you have a right concept, right direction, we can definitely solve the questions that is why I have taken the first mole concept because mole concept is one of the most important topic. It covers various uh, top, various important topics like atomic weight, then equivalent mass concept, how to find the equivalent mass, then the then the second part of mole concept is stoichiometry. We know stoichiometry 1 and 2. We need uh, we uh, discuss uh, in stoichiometry how to find the quantity of the unknown substance. Clear to you, there are lots of things in atomic structure is one of the most important. Basically, these topics are completely calculative based. So, I have taken few questions and definitely my friend it will help you a lot. So, let's start the question answer round. My first question, read the question carefully what is given here. That is 34.2 gram of sucrose. What is given? 34.2 gram of sucrose, okay, are dissolved in 90 gram of water in a glass. Okay, the number of oxygen atom in the solution. Read the question carefully. It is given here that is 34.2 gram of sucrose, that is C12H22O11 and 90 gram of H2O. This is the case here. Again, I am repeating. 34.2 gram of sucrose and 90 gram of H2O we have. Now, they are asking how many number of oxygen atoms are there in this complete solution. Now, how to find? First of all, we have to find the number of oxygen atom in 34.2 gram of sucrose. Then we have to find the number of oxygen atom in 90 gram of H2O. Is it clear to you? So, let's start how to solve the question. Okay, I am giving you a detailed solution. So, it will take time. In competitive examination, you have only 30 to 40 seconds and within 30 to 40 seconds, you have to solve each and every questions, my friend. So, let's start here. What we get? We know what is the molecular mass of C12H22O11 is 342 gram. Is it clear to you? Oh, okay. Now, what we will write here? That is 1 mole of C12 H22O11 contain 11 mole of oxygen atom. Clear to you? Yes, 11 mole of oxygen atoms. Clear? Now, 1 mole contains how many gram? That is the molecular mass. We will put here 342 gram of sucrose C12 H22O11 contains, now tell me, 11 into 6.022 into 10 to the power 23 oxygen atoms. Okay, I, we have converted the mole into atoms. Yes. Now, given here 34.2. So, tell me 34.2 gram of sucrose C12H22O11 will contain 11 into 6.022 into 10 to the power 23 divided by divided by 342 multiply by 34.2. Am I right? Is it clear to you? Yes, sir. Definitely you are correct here. Now, what will happen? This will cancel this one. We get here 11 into 6.022 into 10 to the power 22 oxygen atoms. Is it clear? Yes. Now, I am moving here. Now, we have got the number of oxygen atom in 34.2 gram of sucrose. Now, we have to find the number of oxygen atom in 90 gram of H2O. It is given here. We know 1 mole H2O contains 1 mole of oxygen atom. If we, ap if we apply the what? The mole concept method. 1 mole of oxygen atom. Okay, what is the mass of 1 mole of H2O? We know molecular mass of H2O is 18, 18 gram. 18 gram H2O contains, that is 1 into 6.022 into 10 to the power 23 atoms of oxygen. Is it clear? Yes. Now, what we have? We have 90 gram. So, 90 gram of H2O will contain 1 multiply 6.022 into 10 to the power 23, okay, multiply by 18, divide, uh, multiply by 90 divided by 18. Is it clear to you? Yes. 
now 18 fives are 90 so what we have we have 5 into 6.022 into 10 to the power 23 atoms of oxygen now check the things again that is check check here one mole of h2o 1.6.022 90 yes 5 into 6.022 into 10 to the power 20 again i'm checking the calculation here 11 multiply 11 into 10 to the power okay 11 into say 11 multiply 6.022 into 22 oxygen atom now finally what we get therefore total number of oxygen atoms total number of oxygen atoms will be equal to 11 multiply 6.022 into 10 to the power 22 plus 5 multiply 6.022 into 10 to the power 23 now can we add them yes definitely we add those things after adding after after getting the complete solution we get the answer it will be 3.66 into 10 to the power 24 oxygen atom this is the answer this is the detailed solution of this question i have taken this question so that you can cover the um, uh, or you can practice the entire mole concept clear to you now moving here so for this question that is this is the a option the a is the correct option check out the solution check out the detailed solution again pause the video and write down the solution clear to you yes sir. now i'm going to drop this part now let's move to the next question question number two read the question very carefully now question number two is what volume of oxygen gas measured at zero degree celsius at one at and one atm that is ntp condition is needed or stp is needed to burn completely one liter of propane gas okay one liter how may how volume of oxygen gas okay propane gas okay what is the formula of propane that is c3h8 when treated with oxygen there is a complete combustion take place this is the case okay now it gives you co2 plus h2o let me balance the thing c3 put here 3 okay now hydrogen is 4 put here 4 now oxygen is 3 to the 6 4 10 put here 5 what we observe here that is 1 mole C3H8 require 5 mole of O2. This is a question from stoichiometry. 1 mole of C3H8 requires 5 mole of O2. Okay. In 1 mole, we know 22.4 liter. This is the ideal situation given. That is STP condition. 22.3, uh, 22.4 liter C3H8 require 5 into 22.4. 4 liter of O2 clear yes now what we have 1 liter of in question it is given 1 liter of propane require 5 into 22.4 divided by 1 liter uh, divided by 1 liter divided by uh, sorry 5 into 10 to by 24 multiply by 1 divided by 22.4 liter of O2. Is it clear? Now this 24 will cancel this one is equal to 5 liter of O2. This is the case here. So what is the answer? It's very simple. We can predict that is B is the correct option 5 liter. Simple question command over the theory helps you a lot now if anyone ask you how many gram of co2 forms now in this case we have to find the limiting reagent then and then also you can find the value exact value of the product limiting reagent decide the uh, quantity of the product form during a reaction so be careful check each and every things i cannot cover the entire syllabus in a single frame but uh, but yes i can discuss the uh, few question few important question by using the concept of this chapter clear now let's move to the question number 3 what is given in question number 3 look at suppose the element x and y combine to form two compound x y2 okay we have the condition here is given we have two elements that is x 
एंड y. Okay. Now they combine to form two compound. First one is x y two, and the second one is it is x three y two. As per the question, it is given x three y two. When zero point one mole of x y two weighing ten gram. Okay, zero point one mole of x y two weighing ten gram. So tell me one mole x y two weighing ten multiply. Uh, one divided by zero point one. That will be equal to hundred gram. Clear? Again, I am repeating. That is one mole of x y two. That is has mass hundred gram. That means to say this is the molar mass. We can say the molar mass of x y two is equal to hundred gram. This is the case here. Yes, sir. Definitely, this is the case here. Okay. Now the next one is 0.05 mole of x3 y2 weighing 9 gram. The atomic weight of x and y. I'm moving here. Check it out. What is given in the question? Okay, molar mass of x y2 is 100 gram. Now again, it is given 0.05 mole of x3 y2 weighing. How many gram? Nine gram. Okay, zero point zero five mole of x three y two weighing nine nine gram. Then what is one mole of x three y two weighing nine into zero point? Uh, pardon, nine into one divided by zero point zero five gram. Now solve it. Nine into hundred divided by five. This will move upper side. Yes, sir. Now what will happen? We get twenty. That is one eighty gram. So we can say molar mass, molar mass of x three y two has value one eighty gram. Now as per the question, it is given what are the atomic weight of x and y. Now we have two equation. Look at this is x y two x y molar mass of x y two it contains two atom. So we will write here. Let the uh, atomic mass of x is x. Oh, uh, sorry, sorry. Write like this. Let the atomic weight or mass atomic weight of x is equal to a, and the atomic weight of y is equal to b. Now put the value here. That is a. Plus two b is equal to hundred for the first expression. Do you know how to write this expression? X has atomic mass a and y two times so two b. A plus two b is equal to hundred for for the first expression. And from the second expression, x three y two, we will get x three that is three a plus two b is equal to one eighty. Again, I am repeating that is three a plus two b is equal to one eighty. This is the second question. We have two expression a plus two b and three a plus two b. I am moving here. Check it out. If if we solve this expression, definitely will get the answer. So how to solve a plus two b is equal to hundred and three a plus two b is equal to one eighty. Now minus 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 this cancel this one minus two a is equal to eighty. A is equal to eighty by two is equal to forty. Am I right? Yes. Now again, put, how to find the value of b? So we know. Now it is given a plus two b is equal to hundred. Put the value of forty plus two b is equal to hundred. So two b is equal to hundred minus forty is equal to sixty. B is equal to sixty by two. That will be equal to thirty. So what is the atomic mass of X? That is forty. What is the atomic mass of Y? This one is thirty. Lengthy, not lengthy question. I am giving you the detailed solution. In examination, you can easily solve in a quick interval of time. Clear? Now, what is the answer in this case? We will write here that is A is the correct option. Clear? Yes, sir. Now I am going to rub. Let's move to the next segment. Next question. Now the next one is, my friend, question number four. Read the question carefully. 
how many spectral lines are produced in the spectrum of hydrogen atom from fifth energy level? Do you have any idea? Yes, sir, we have. Number of spectral line from ground state, spectral lines, it will be is equal to N2 minus N1 into N2 minus N1 plus 1 divided by 2. What is N2 here? 5. What is N1? That is ground state 5 minus 1. Then 5 minus 1 plus 1 divided by 2. Clear? Now, this will cancel this one. 5 minus 1 is equal to 4. 4 into 5 divided by 2. 2 to the 4. So, number of spectral line will be equal to 10. This is a simple formula. Or we have the another formula also. If uh, uh, we consider N1 as a ground state, so we can easily write number of spectral lines. Number of spectral lines will be equal to N n minus 1 divided by 2 that is 5 5 minus 1 divided by 2 that will be equal to 5 into 4 divided by 2 it will cancel each other we get the number of a spectral line 10 here clear yes sir we get the number of a spectral line here 10 so what will be the answer in this case we will say the answer is b number of a spectral line is 10 this is a question from atomic structure and to find the wavelength of the uh, 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 each transaction that is a series, Lyman series, Balmer series, Pascan series, Bracket series, Fund series and Humphrey series. Lyman series belongs to the ultraviolet region, Balmer series belongs to the what? Visible region, Pascan fund, Bracket and Humphrey series belong to the IR region, infrared region. And what is the formula? 1 upon lambda is equal to R, R H Z square 1 upon N1 square minus 1 upon N2 square. This is one of the most important formula to find out the wavelength. It can be represented like, like this is wave number. R H is a red bird constant 109678 per centimeter value. Z is we know atomic number but this formula is valid for one electron system do you do you know this yes this formula is valid for one electron system that is for hydrogen that is for helium plus for lithium 2 plus for beryllium 3 plus for one electron system clear yes now i'm going to have and let's move to the next question <coughs> Now, what is the next question in this case? Check the things. The next question is question number 5. Now, this is node. What is node? Tell me. The place where the probability of finding an electron tends to 0. Odd 0 is called node. Node ha is of two types. First one is radial node. That is the place where the radial wave function of the electron becomes 0 or tends to 0 is called radial node. And the place where the angular wave function tends to 0 is called angular node. Nodes are of two types. First one is my friend radial or spherical node. Radial nodes. And the second one is my friend that is angular nodes. Okay, now how to find the number of radial nodes and angular nodes? To find the total number of nodes, first of all, total number of nodes has formula n minus 1. Clear? Number of radial nodes, number of radial nodes will be equal to n minus l minus 1 and the number of angular nodes will be equal to L. This is the case here. Yes, number of radial nodes equal to N minus L minus 1 and angular nodes will be equal to uh, L. Now, what is the uh, value in case of 3P? I am moving here. In case of 3P, now for 3P, N is equal to 3 and L is equal to 1. That we know this, yes. For S, the value of L is equal to 0. For P, the value of L is equal to 1. For D, the value of L is equal to 2. And for F, the value of L is equal to 3. 
This is the case. This is what is the L? L is azimuthal quantum number. What is N? N is principal quantum number. Yes, sir. That's the tr uh, true things. Or you can say it represents cell. It represents subcell. Normal things. Okay. Now number of radial nodes. Number of radial nodes will be equal to n minus l minus one, three minus one minus one cancel each other. That is three. And number of angular nodes will be equal to l. Will be equal to l. That will be equal to one. So we can easily uh, wait for a moment. N minus l minus one, and we have to find the value of n minus l minus one and in 3p total number of nodes is not okay and n minus one three minus two there is some mistake yes n minus l minus one one minus one minus two they will not cancel each other so the number of radial nodes is one and number of angular nodes is one and total number of nodes yes sir total number of nodes in this case n minus 1 3 minus 1 equal to 2 or you can say 1 plus 1 2 what you want you can do this is the nodes this is a good concept we, uh, we have utilized here and simple thing so the answer will be 1 and 1 question number 5 the answer is 1 and 1 the number of radial and angular nodes in 2p orbitals is the option is c option c is the correct option here yes Now let's move to the next question. Question number six. Question number six. Now read the question carefully. The value of Planck's constant is the value of Planck constant s is equal to six point six three into ten to the power minus thirty four joule second. Okay. The speed of light. Okay. The speed of light is equal to three into ten to the power seventeen. Nanometer per second. Okay, three into ten to the power seventeen nanometer per second. Now, what is the uncertainty in position in nanometer? What is the uncertainty in position? Now, tell me what will happen. Uncertainty in position in nanometer. In this case, what is uncertainty? There is a mistake. There is a mistake in this question. Pardon, my friend. This is not the question. Wait for a moment. Let me let me check the question once. <coughs> Sorry, friends. There is mistake in this question. So I am skipping this question. And uh, there is a question. What is uncertainty in its position? But it is not <coughs> actual question. Actual question. What is the find the frequency? Which is uh, find the frequ uh, find the uh, wavelength closest to a frequency. That is the question. So I am skipping this question. This question is not completely correct. So leave this question and let's move to the next question. The next question is question number seven. Now, what is given? Atom of which of the following element has greatest ability to attract electrons? Tell me, atoms of which of the following element has the greatest ability to attract electron? We know. That in case of highly electronegative atom, of which of the following element has the greatest ability to attract electron? Attract electrons. We know silicon, sulfur, sodium, and chlorine. In case of chlorine, we people know it has high value of electron gain enthalpy. <coughs> Pardon. It has high value of electron gain enthalpy. That means to say, it has a strong tendency. Again, I am repeating. It has a strong tendency to attract electrons due to high value of electron gain enthalpy. So, for question number seven, that is D is the correct option. Chlorine is the answer. Is it clear? Yes, sir. Completely. Now, let's move to the next question. What is the next question here? Check the things. Question number eight. That is the correct order of ionization energy. I am going to mention here that is first ionization energy. If they do not mention that, treat it as a first ionization energy. What is given? The correct order of first ionization energy of carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, and fluorine. Tell me, as we know the general trends. What the general trends say? When we move along the period, ionization energy increases. So the order should be carbon. nitrogen 
oxygen and fluorine. But during our lecture, we have go through this that this is not a correct explanation. This is not a correct answer. What should be the answer? We know half filled and fulfilled subcell. Half filled and fulfilled subcell concept. That if the element has half filled uh, subcell or fulfilled subcell, then it is more stable than the partially filled subcell. What I'm telling, then it is more stable than the partially filled subcell. So if I come take the uh, electronic configuration, carbon has electronic configuration 1s2, 2s2, 2p2, and nitrogen has electronic configuration 1s2, 2s2, 2p3. Oxygen has electronic configuration 1s2, 2s2, and 2p4. Clear? And fluorine has electronic configuration 1s2, 2s2, 2p. Five. This is the case here. Yes. Now, when we compare nitrogen and oxygen, what do we observe in case of nitrogen and oxygen? Nitrogen has half filled electronic configuration because P contains six electron and it has three electron. Now, it is more stable. So, it will take more energy. It will require there, there is a uh, requirement of large amount of energy to release the electron from nitrogen. So, due to this reason, it will have more ionization energy than oxygen. So, the actual order is carbon, oxygen, nitrogen and fluorine. What is the answer here? Carbon, nitrogen, oxygen and fluorine. For question number 8, we can say that is B is the correct option. <laughs> is it clear to you? Yes, sir, definitely. Now, I am going to rub and let us move to the next question. What is the next question here? Check the things. That is question number 9. Read the question carefully. Generally, the first ionization enthalpy increases along a period. What I am telling? Generally, what we observe? The first ionization energy increases along the period. But uh, there are some exception. Yes, there are some exception in case of nitrogen, oxygen exception in case of phosphorus sulfur exception in case of beryllium boron exception in case of uh, magnesium aluminium exception clear to you so which is not the exception here nitrogen oxygen exception magnesium aluminium exception beryllium boron exception but sodium and magnesium is not a exception so, what I am telling this question is very simple. We can say that is sodium and magnesium is not an exception. So, for question number 9, we will say that is B is the correct option. Now, let us move to the next question. What is the next question? Look at the paramagnetic behavior of B2. This is a question that is we have taken from the MOT theory, molecular orbital theory. Is this clear? What is given the paramagnetic behavior of B2 due to the presence? Okay. First of all, tell me what is B2? B2 contains total number 10 electron. And how to write the electronic configuration? That is sigma 1s2, sigma star 1s2, yes, sigma 2s2, sigma star 2s2, then pi 2p x1, then pi 2p y1. Now, each pi 2 p x and pi 2 p x that is a bonding molecular orbital contains two unpaired electron due to the presence of unpaired electron b2 is paramagnetic in nature now it is in bonding so what will be the answer two unpaired electron in pi bonding subcell it if if i write here sigma star this is anti bonding this is bonding so the answer will be two unpaired electron in pi bonding molecular orbital. So, for this question that is A is the correct option my friend. Clear to you again I am repeating for this question A is the correct option. Okay. So, what we are doing now I am not going to discuss further. Uh, further. This is the last question of this session read each and every questions then I have, I have skipped one question six that was the incomplete data and each and every chapter is very much important you cannot cover the entire chapter by 
solving one or two questions just we are giving you a golden question like this just uh, follow these questions and try to clarify your concept try to practice yourself that is a practice type uh, you are th uh, just thinking but before solving the question clear all the theories theories are one of the most important weapon if you have a strong theory then you can easily solve the question if you don't have the strong theory then you cannot solve the questions very very easily because here the we have a restricted time frame during our competitive examination and within this time frame you have to solve the questions around 45 questions in chemistry so it's very tough but you can make it easy i know you people are very much talented and one more thing i request you if you have any doubt related to any topic you can post your question on our website www.misostudy.com definitely i will read the question and i will check the question and will help you and will reply you as as per the as per your requirement so my friend now time has come time to say bye bye thank you so much